the river. Discussion regarding annexation and extraterritorial jurisdiction. Mike, are you going to try to give us the least bit of a kickoff on this? Yes, I can. Uh, there's, there's some basic facts that we should lay down. Um, because part of the consideration that you've got to make is, is burdened by some substantial state statute restrictions. And the statutory restrictions um, are first off in our DTJ, which actually gives us the authority to enforce our new UDO in, er in a territory outside of the community, uh, beyond the community's borders, because what happens at the community edge will impact the town. So the state has agreed to allow that enforcement to occur in that space. We're limited to a one mile uh, extraterritorial jurisdiction from the main body of the town. We can't do it off a of satellite. Um, so the, the Fort Leadership <coughs> is a satellite in of itself and we can enforce our regulations on the Fort Dealership property because that's, that is a satellite. We cannot use that to gain extra control around it. So we are about one mile from the main body of town. At, at present, to, just to give you an example, if we were to extend along the corridors, we have had some discussions about, uh, and I have had some discussions both with uh, the manager and with the planning board about doing a corridor annexation because that's what the development truly is, is in the corridor. And at this point, um, that our current where our current border is basically at the at the J crossing of 441. That would give us almost the Terrell Road, uh, which is where the old Monte Albans property would be. That um, that would be one mile, almost one mile. Uh, in July, when the new annexation comes into effect that one mile gets extended the distance from there, from the, the Kirk Creek to the Jay, to uh, the south end of Saxby. So that brings that one mile truly to the railroad. So, so that's one <coughs> limitation that we have on, on extending our, our authority to control. The other is on the involuntary annexation, and that's been a hot topic in previous the previous session of the of the state, um, and and will, I, as I understand it, will be brought up again in the short term this year, and if it's not successful there, it'll be brought up again in, in future years. And they're attempting to put some severe restrictions on in, in North Carolina on the ability of a community to involuntarily annex property. The biggest hurdle that we have in doing an involuntary annexation, and this was reflected in some of the things that we were we had to do to be sure that we were under um, under what the state statutory requirements were when we did this one last year, is that we are limited to only annexing a perimeter of an area that has at least one eighth or twelve percent of that perimeter contiguous to the existing main body of town. So that you just can't, or can't annex a long strip off a short contact. As a matter of fact, if you've got a point, if you come to a point like Zaxby's would be, basically you can't use that as a jumping point to move on down the road. Because you, you'll only be able to move whatever that width of that point is. You'll only be able to move seven eighths more of a perimeter, so it would be small bites. So that is a significant restriction that's currently there. And obviously, the, in some of the people in, in Raleigh's feelings uh, um, that have a vote on this issue, uh, there is a view that they want to do away with that ability entirely. So those are the two biggest restrictions that we have on just advancing forward and marching forward. Uh, there is two ways to attack it. We can do it on our own, or we can seek a, a legislative um, action as part of this for the ETJ extension. Uh, there have been communities in North Carolina that have been granted larger than one mile distance. 
um, the larger the community, you can go up to three miles away. Uh, Charlotte could have an EPJ of three miles away from their main body of um, because of the size of the community. But because of our size, we're restricted to one mile. Uh, we could ask the state to make consideration that it could go longer, especially if we if we have a plan of corridors and we're not trying to go four <coughs> miles out on each corridor, but we have one that we're really concentrating on, like 441, that maybe we could seek an extension on that in that particular direction. So there are some options that are available to us. But right now we have to work within the guidelines of state statute. And and those again are, are issues that are going to determine how far we need to go. One of the issues that was brought up at the last meeting in regards to the annexation was that they have a plan. And we are pursuing, um, we've got a couple of issues on our plate right now with the planning board. I have had some discussions with them. They're all in favor of this form of of uh, ETJ extension where we're dealing with corridors and not just a blanket a circle around town that encompasses a lot of people who really don't need to be under that, those type of controls. Um, and yet we haven't been able to have enough time to formalize the plan. So we're hoping to come up with a plan recommendation possibly in, in, in March we're hoping for. Trying to get the sign ordinance done, which, as you know from my reports, has been on the plate for a, a year or more now. And we kind of had to interrupt that to deal with other business that comes before us. We have the, um, the housing development that's coming forward at the next planning board meeting. So we won't be able to discuss the sign ordinance now until February. So once we, if we get that wrapped up in February, the recommendation to the board, then in March, I've already talked to them about proceeding on, a, on coming up with some type of an annexation plan that we can graph out and show you maps as to what they would recommend as far as uh, an extent of annexation and an extent of ETJ. So realistically, at present, <coughs> we can go out to Terrell Road with our ETJ. ETJ only. And we can go two more miles south and still allow satellite annexation By because state it would be within three miles of our corporate limits. That's correct. And then we could, upon each uh, addressing of a satellite annexation issue, we could require that the business conform to the UDO and to any of the other regulations which we have in place or want to choose to put in place because it's just a, a choice we can make. That, that could be a condition of your approval of an annexation because that is an important aspect. I did mention that the, the manager in, in regards to the annexations that we're here because on, on at least one of the properties there could be some significant parking issues if the use of that building changes. So, you know, we need to make sure that, that we're not creating a parking problem on 441. Um, because of the inability to get onto the property. So we need to we need to look at those kind of issues and make sure that that they are in agreement to do that as part of our consideration for the annexation. Um, those are some issues that, that we should address with that growth down for Just not just not take the building as it sits and allow whatever use will come into that after the annex without any kind of additional regulation. And that's Mike, I, think, I got a couple of questions. It's certainly something you and I can work on and I'd be more than happy to have.